it's Kevin from KDW Mixing and Mastering. Uh, this week I'm going to, I'm just going to run you through the control room in uh, Cubase and how I use it. I'm also going to show you how I set up a product called Sonarworks. Uh, this would also potentially apply to something like the T-Rex Arc system. Might be slightly different, but you could use this method to um, get the results you want. So with the control room, so I, at the moment here you can see I've got meter and I've got four sets of speakers set up. So I can show you. So if I go to the control room here, you'll see here I've got my main near field monitors and I've got a set of baritone speakers on the B channel. I've got my headphones on the C channel and I've got a standard home Sony hi-fi system on the D channel. Okay so while I am mixing I can be switching between each of these speakers by clicking on these here and listening to the system on the various speakers. Um, the place you set that up is, let me just pull it up. So if you go into the VST connections, instead of setting up the outputs here, you go to the studio section and you turn on the control room and you set your items up here so you can add them all. So you can see here, this is where I've added my items. So I've got my main monitors and it's telling me what ports I'm using for each one so I allocate those um, so I've got one set of headphones that I call my mixing headphones on an output and that's one interface on the front of my Apollo and then I have another set of headphones which are closed back headphones that are isolating as well so they don't sound that great but they're good for when you're in a room with a guitar amp or doing vocals or something you need some clothes back and you need to, with mine because they isolate they cut out the noise of what's in the room and the amp so I can hear what's being recorded through the microphone so I have that set up as a separate set of headphone a uh, separate item there and you'll see over here it's listed here as the recording headphones on this track here which I have normally turned off but I can turn it on that can get a different mix. It can get a uh, the the click when the mi whereas the mixing headphones can as well, but don't normally. I also have a couple of settings down here that I use a lot now. Dim, obviously, pretty obvious. So that dims the signal significantly. I use that a lot to check my levels. So I will dim to see how loud the vocals are compared to the other instruments. If you turn the volume down really low, the vocals should be almost the last thing you hear before you hear nothing. On top of that, I also have this reference button here and I have that set to minus 8 dB. So that's another level I'll check. Or if I start to push up my mix to a, a mastering level, I can click that and that puts my speakers back to a my, my normal mixing level so it doesn't get extremely loud and it's just sitting at that comfortable level while I'm pushing the volume of the mix up. Um, and then when I do want to push it loud so I can hear it in a loud mode, I just take that that uh, reference off. So if I click that, you'll see it jumps to minus eight, and then it's zero. Dim, obviously it doesn't show a value, but it dims. So if you go into the preferences, yes, there it is. Preferences, VST control room, you will see here you can set the dim volume. So I have the main dim volume set to minus 12 and I have the reference level volume to minus eight. Now, what you can do if that's not enough, so that gives you some options. I can drop it to minus eight. That's a low level, but not extreme low. Minus 12 goes even lower, obviously. But then you can also add the two together. So right, turn on the reference first, then turn on the dim. And that will actually drop it down, we'll add the two together, so you'll end up dropping down to minus 20. So that's when you get to a real extreme low. 
in uh, in systems like Pro Tools, when you have something like SonarWorks, so let me just explain what SonarWorks is first. So SonarWorks is a room treatment system. So you um, you purchase this software, you get a microphone with it, put it in your room, you do some analysis, and it determines the issues in your room. And it does this pretty little graph. And if you want to treat it to flat, like if you have it to flat, it'll show you what it does to adjust to um, get rid of the problems in your room so that you are hearing more accurately. As I said, there's another system called the T-Rex Arc system that's very similar, does the same thing. This one's a lot newer. Uh, this one's got a... I, I prefer it. It seems to be a lot... The sound to me is a lot better. I did have the Arc system and I ended up stopped using it even before this came out because it just wasn't... it wasn't sounding right to me and uh, it just didn't work. Whereas this one here really to me is a lot better. I don't know why. It just seems a bit truer and it seems a bit more realistic. The Arc system made sound a bit fake, whereas this one doesn't make it sound fake. It makes it sound a bit more realistic. You've got other options here, so you don't have to go to all of those extremes and you can adjust your volumes and save some presets. So you can do measurements with various things. This one here also has a headphone calibration, one where I'll show you. So if you've got a you, you can buy their headphones or you can have a set of headphones that are part of their default calibrations and list that and, and it corrects the issues with your headphones. So if you want to mix on headphones but still do it accurately, they can compensate for the issues that a headphone has. And, and you can even simulate. So if I wanted to go to, say, simulate here, I can simulate various other things like Japanese white some headphones like this they call this popular consumer headphones which obviously by the picture you can see a beats it gives you an idea of what they do because like if i was to pick the beats you'll see there that the correction let me just hide some of these other ones uh so if we hide so we'll hide those corrections just so you can see this is the target line that it's trying to achieve. So that's what it believes Beats Headphones does in your listening, so your listening environment. And if you look at that, and, and if you use Beats Headphones, you'll know that this is really true. You look at all the low end that is there in Beats Headphones. It's a massive. And if you compare it to something else like this set of studio headphones, it doesn't have that massive low end but it has a lot of this and a lot of top end there. Um, so that's that set of headphones there. So there's a few others here. Um, if you switch over to your NS10s, you'll see a lot of the low end disappears and you get this bump here, a little bump there drops. And that's another set of French hi-fi speaker systems. There you go. Fair bit of low end in that one. Uh, but you can go back to your calibration. So obviously flat here, it's trying to achieve flat. Um, you can go for custom, so you can have a low drop off. Um, you can you can tweak that, so that's a custom one if you want to sort of roll off some low end or bring it up. You've got your predefined, so there you can pick some some options there for other speakers. So I set that to flat. Um, so that's the so if you look there that is what it believes it detected in my room obviously you can see here got a bit of an issue here at uh, yeah 100 to 200 hertz I've got a bit of a build up there and there's a bit of a drop here at 1k not too bad there so it's fairly flat most of the way a couple of little bit issues and it rolls off a bit in the low end which you sort of expect in a lot of places unless you've got a really expensive room this is the correction that it's doing the green line so it's dropping a little bit of the highs there trying to flatten it out to get that flat line it does a boost at the 1k to try and get that back bit of a cut there I'm not sure that's about 500 and a significant cut between 100 and 200 and then a bit of a boost here 
probably about 60 hertz to try and get some more low end in. So that's what this plugin is doing. This one here has some more advanced features like tweaking the wet dry level. So if you don't want to go fully wet, you can have a part of this and a part of your actual uh, standard sound going through. In other DAWs, a lot of other DAWs, let's say for instance Pro Tools, they don't have a control room in Pro Tools. So generally what you would do is you would put this very last on your output or your final mix bus and you would mix through it and then you just have to remember to turn it off before you uh, export your mix otherwise you export it with this correction on which is only a correction for your room it's not a correction for your sound or your mix and this wouldn't work when you take it out to your car or to somebody else's house so with those ones you need to remember to bypass it and I know oh, you had this problem before you'd always forget and then you go to listen to it somewhere else and go, damn, I forgot to take the, um, the the room correction tool off. So the beauty with Cubase and the control room is you don't need to do that. And the reason is, if I go back to here, in my control room here, we've got these ones here. But if I click over to setup, then on each of these buttons, I can put plugins and they only affect what you're hearing they're not affecting your bounce outs so if I was to do an audio like an export if I want to bounce down a mix okay and I have it set to my output or I could have it set to a, a bus I haven't got a bus on here but Let's just say it's our standard output, okay? These plugins that are sitting in the control room do not get applied to that because that this is after the output. Okay, so this is the beauty of Cubase because normally in, say, Pro Tools, you would have the plugin here on the output or a bus, as I said, and you would have to bypass it because your bounce outs or your exports would be going through that but they're not going through this control room. This, these plugins are only affecting the output to the speakers. So what have I done? Okay, so in my case, A was my main mixing speakers. So in that, I put the Sonoworks room correction tool and I have it configured with a room analysis for my room using those speakers. So you can do a room analysis and save a preset in Sonar Works for different speakers if you wanted to. Um, I haven't done it, I've only done it with my main ones because other speakers, I just want to hear the raw sound in a untreated room like anybody else would around the world. But while I'm mixing on my main speakers, I want it to be correct. So I have a preset for that and that preset is loaded, it's active all the time and it is sitting on the A channel for that. Then just after that, I've just got a brick wall limiter. And the only reason I've got there that there is just as a safety if for some reason my signal is getting very loud and this room correction tool is boosting some signals, it may go too high. And I just put a brick wall limiter there so I'm not any chance of damaging my speakers by going way over the top. Okay, so then when we go over to the B channel, okay, so this is baritones. Now, with the Apollo system, the multiple outputs, you can't control the volume to them. They're just straight out outputs. So that's one downside with an Apollo. Uh, other systems might have multiple monitors that you can configure, but the Apollo at the moment only has one set of monitors and the rest are just line outputs. So to get around that issue, what I've done is so you'll notice here I don't put any room correction on because like I said this is just a crappy set of speakers that I want to hear what the mix sounds like in an untreated environment with a crappy set of speakers. But with the line out signal going to them it's extremely loud. So all I did was I just put two copies of the GEQ10. Now this could be any plugin that just something that doesn't affect the sound because uh, I haven't done anything here but all I've done is just drop the volume so I've dropped it by minus 12.6 there 
and I've dropped it by minus 15 there. Those values I've set just to get them to the same level as my main monitors. So when I switch between them, I don't suddenly get this blast of loud volume or soft volume. I've got them the same volume. So switching between them is nice and neat. And that's why I put that there, just to chop the volume. C is my um, mixing headphones. So with the Sonar Works tool, because this has a headphone correction facility. So you'll see here, I've got another preset, which is for the mixing of the headphone correction tool. So I have a set of Sennheiser HD 650s. They have a correction for that set of headphones, a default correction, not specific to actually my headphones, but just generically to that that brand and model of headphone. You can send your headphones into them to have them tested for exactly for your headphone response, but that might be something you might do if you actually live in an area that's cheap to send your headphones to them and quick. Um, where I am, it would cost a lot of money and a very long time I'd be without headphones. So I haven't taken them up. Uh, this is good enough for me at the moment. So it just does some adjustments as you'll see here. There's the correction line, the green one. Uh, the blue line is what it believes the uh, accuracy of the headphones is. Bit of a bass boost there, a little bit of a dip there. Um, so it's applying this correction to my headphones. So this is on all the time, but only when I switch to C. And then again, I've got another brick wall limiter there just in case the signal gets too hot. And then D is my hi-fi and I have nothing on that. The reason I have nothing on that one is because it's a hi-fi system. I can send it a loud volume and it has its own volume control. So I can turn its volume control down. Whereas my crappy baritone speakers, they do have a volume adjustment on the back, but it only goes down minus six dB. So it's not enough. Whereas a hi-fi system, it can go from zero to whatever. So I don't need to have an adjustment there, but you can put any plugins on here you want. I don't know what you would put on, but you can do anything you like to change the sound. And as I said, if you have the arc system, you could do a similar thing here where you put it on each. The only reason I say it might be different is because I'm not exactly sure whether you can have two instances of the arc system sitting in the system live with two different settings. I don't believe you can because I think when I had it, I tried it, not with this system, but a different way, and I couldn't load two different settings in it, in two instances of it. But you could at least put one on here in, on your main ones and be happy with it. I mean, for one, they don't have a headphone calibration tool, so you probably wouldn't be applying it to your headphone calibration. But as I said, if I wanted to do an analysis of these cheap speakers, with Sonar Works, I could do that and I could put it on here and it could correct for those speakers as well. But as I said, I chose not to do that because I wanted it to sound as other people would hear it. So that's how I use the control room. That's just generally sitting there. I don't look at that. You know, I switch over to, I, I mean, I'm generally sitting here with it on the meter here. And uh, I just switch between these here. And uh, the other great thing with this control room is you can quickly switch over to mono and uh, check your mix uh, mono compatibility just by clicking that button. This control room to me is, it's fantastic. And it's one of the features that Cubase has that just kills Pro Tools. Pro Tools doesn't have this and you know, this is just magnificent. You know, with a Pro Tools system, you'd have to buy a hardware version to do this function. And most mixing facilities have a hardware version to do that. Here, I can do it in software. It's just fantastic. You know, it works great with the uh, Sonar Works tool. So I hope that's been useful to you. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. Like the video, follow me, subscribe. Um, I hope to do more videos in the future. And I'll see you then. Thanks.